Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to discuss proximal humerus fracture. What is proximal humerus fracture? Proximal humerus fracture are those fracture involving the humerus proximal to surgical neck. The components of uh, proximal humerus are articular uh, humeral head, anatomical neck, two tuberosities that is greater tuberosity and the lesser tuberosity and the surgical neck. Regarding the incidence of proximal humerus fracture, it, it accounts for 4 to 6% of all the fracture. It is the third most common non vertebral fracture pattern seen in elderly. Two part surgical neck fracture are the most common one and the incidence is more common in females. This is the evidence of uh, epidemiology of uh, proximal humerus fracture and it shows that the proximal humerus fracture are more common in females as compared to males and the two part fracture were the most common. The risk factors for proximal humerus fracture are osteoporosis, diabetes, epilepsy and female gender. This is a study which shows risk factors for proximal humerus fracture and in this study the risks were found to be diabetes, increasing age, use of medication for scissors and left handedness. Proximal humerus fracture occur as a result of low energy falls in elderly with osteoporotic bone and high energy trauma in the young adults. Let's have a talk about the relevant anatomy of the proximal humerus. The proximal humerus, as I already mentioned, is composed of articular surface, which marks the head of humerus, anatomical neck, greater tuberosity, lesser tuberosity, and the surgical neck. Surgical neck is a weak area below the head and most often involved in the fracture, whereas anatomical neck indicates old epiphyseal plate. The average neck shaft angle is 135 degree. Here is the points for the functional anatomy of the shoulder. What are the four parts of the proximal humerus? The proximal humerus is composed of four distinct anatomic segments. The shaft of the humerus, the greater tuberosity, the lesser tuberosity and the head segment. These segments correspond to the four ossification centers of the proximal humerus. The shaft of the humerus connects with the proximal humerus at the surgical neck just below the tuberosities. The anatomical neck is situated above the tuberosity between the articular margin and the attachment of the articular capsule. <coughs> Regarding the ligaments of the shoulder joint, coracohumeral ligament, which is attached from the base of the coracoid to the greater tuberosity, its function is to strengthen the rotator interval and the three glenohumeral ligament, superior glenohumeral ligament, middle glenohumeral ligament and inferior glenohumeral ligament. The function of the superior glenohumeral ligament is to restrain inferior translation at zero degree of abduction, whereas middle glenohumeral ligament resists AP translation in the mid-range of abduction and inferior glenohumeral ligament restrains AP translation at 90 degree of abduction. The muscle attachment of the proximal humerus are as follows. On the greater tuberosity from superior to inferior, the three rotator cuff muscles are attached, supraspinatus, infraspinatus and teres minor. On the lesser tuberosity, the subscapularis muscle gets its insertion. And on the lateral lip of bicipital groove, the pectoralis major makes its insertion. And on the medial lip of bicipital groove, teres major is attached. Hence, the ladies between two major. The blood supply of proximal humerus is very important because of the development of avascular necrosis as a result of four part fracture of the proximal humerus. The blood supply comes from the axillary artery 
two branches of the axillary arteries supply the proximal aspect of the humerus. One is anterior humeral circumflex artery, which forms large anastomosis with the other vessel in the proximal humerus, and its branches anterior lateral ascending branch and arcuate artery, the terminal branch and main supply to the greater tuberosity. The other artery is posterior humeral circumflex artery, and recent studies have suggested that it is the main blood supply to the humeral head. As I have already mentioned, the blood supply of the proximal humerus is very important because of the risk of development of avascular necrosis. Vascularity of the articular segment is more likely to be preserved if more than 8 mm of calcar is attached to the articular segment. In order to define the factors of the avascular necrosis of the proximal humerus as a result of fracture, fertile criteria is utilized. And it's composed of if less than 8 mm of cell car length attached to the articular segment and there is disruption of the medial hinge and there is increased factor complexity with the displacement of more than 1 cm and angulation of more than 45 degree. So it increases the risk of evascular necrosis of the proximal humerus. The deforming forces across the fracture is influenced by the muscle attach. Pectoralis major displaces the shaft anteriorly and medially. Supraspinatus, infrat and uh, infraspinatus and pubic minus uh, exert pressure on the greater tuberosity and cause it to rotate externally and superiorly, whereas subscapularis internally rotates articular segment or lesser tuberosity. There may be associated condition with the fracture. The nerve injury may be occur in conjunction with the fracture and axillary nerve injury is the most common. However, the incidence of arterial injury is very low and it's more pronounced in older patients. <laughs> and arterial injury most often will occur if the fracture is at the surgical neck level or with subcorrified dislocation of the head. Now let's have a talk about the classification of proximal humerus fracture. The most famous classification for proximal humerus fracture is near classification. Near defined the proximal humerus into four segments. One is greater tuberosity, the other is lesser tuberosity, the articular surface and the shaft. And we are considered a segment as a separate part if the displacement of a segment is more than 1 cm or it's more than 45 degree angulated. One part fracture are those non-displaced or minimally displaced fracture, usually the humeral neck. In two part fracture, displacement of the tuberosity of more than 1 cm or surgical neck with head shaft angled or displaced. In three-part fracture, there is a displacement of the greater or lesser tuberosities and the articular surface. And in the fourth part, displacement of the shaft, articular surface and both tuberosities occur. Head splitting is a variant which split through the articular surface. And it's important regarding the treatment point of view. Here is an example of surgical neck two-part fracture. You can see the displacement. This is an example of greater tuberosity two-part fracture. This is lesser tuberosity two-part fracture. This is greater tuberosity three-part fracture. And this is an example of lesser tuberosity three-part fracture. And it is greater tuberosity four part fracture. And this is lesser tuberosity four part fracture. Now let's talk about the clinical presentation of proximal humerus fracture. There may be history of fall, low energy trauma, or high energy trauma. It is a pain and swelling of the right shoulder or left shoulder. There is a decrease in the range of movements. 
On inspection, you may see extensive ecchymosis of the chest, arm, and forearm. You must have to assess the neurovascular status of the limb. As I already mentioned, axial nerve injury is the most common. And to assess the function of axial nerve, you have to determine the function of deltoid muscle and lateral shoulder sensation. Arterial injury may be masked by extensive collateral circulation preserving distal pulses. So the presence of pulses does not exclude the vascular injury. And you have to examine the nearby region as well. For investigation, first the plane radiographs are advised and the views you have to advise are true AP, scapular Y and axillary view. The additional view may include apical oblique, well view and west point axillary view. You have to measure the combined cortical thickness on medial and lateral cortical thickness. If it is more than 4 mm, studies suggest correlation with increased lateral blade pull out strength if this if this uh, cortical thickness is smaller. The other investigation which you may need is the CT scan and CT scan is advised for pre-operative planning. Humeral head or greater tuberous deposition uncertain, intra-articular communication or concern for head split fracture. This is the AP Gracie view. See how it's taken. This is a scapular Y view. And this is the axial view in which the beam is directed with the arm abducted towards the axilla. Here you see the axial view x-ray of the shoulder which shows humeral head. Superiorly you can see lesser tuberosity. Inferiorly you can see greater tuberosity, the acromion, the glenoid and corocoid process. Regarding the treatment option, the non-operative treatment includes sling immobilization followed by progressive rehabilitation. The indication of sling immobilization or non-operative treatment in a patient with proximal humerus fracture are minimally displaced surgical and anatomic neck fracture, greater tuberosity fracture displacement less than 5 mm, and surgically unfit patient. Why greater tuberosity fracture should be displaced less than 5 mm? Because if the fracture is displaced more than 5 mm, it will result in impingement with the loss of with the loss of abduction and external rotation. The other option of treatment is close reduction and percutaneous spinning. And the indication for close reduction and percutaneous spinning is if the fracture is two-part surgical neck fracture. Three part and valgus impacted four part fracture in a patient with good bone quality, minimal metaphysical combination, and intact medial calcar. However, close reduction and percutaneous spinning is associated with higher complication rate compared to upper reduction internal fixation, hemi arthroplasty, and reverse shoulder arthroplasty. Axillary nerve is at risk with the lateral pain, whereas musculocutaneous nerve, cephalic vein, and bicep tendon is at risk with anterior pains. The other option of treatment is open reduction and internal fixation. And the indications are greater tuberosity displacement more than 5 mm, displaced two part fracture, three and four part fracture in younger patient, head splitting fracture in younger patient. Regarding the prognosis, medial support is necessary for fracture with posterior medial communication. If there is posterior medial communication and the calcar is insufficient, the use of fibular strut graft can be used to support the bone. Calcar screw placement is critical to decrease the virus collapse of the head. The other option of treatment is intramedullary nailing. 
and the indication for intramedullary nailing is surgical neck fracture or three part greater tuberosity fracture in younger patient combined proximal humerus and humeral shaft fracture the intramedullary nailing is biomechanically inferior with torsional stress compared to plates however it offers favorable rates of fracture healing and range of movements correspond to orif the other option of treatment is arthroplasty which can be either hemi arthroplasty or reverse total shoulder arthroplasty hemi arthroplasty is indicated in younger patient with the age group of 40 to 65 years old with complex fracture dislocation or head splitting component that may fail fixation recommended use of convertible stems to permit easier conversion to reverse shoulder arthroplasty if necessary in future Reverse total shoulder arthroplasty is indicated in low demand elderly individual with non reconstructible reconstructible tuberosities and poor bone stock older patient with fracture dislocation regarding the arthroplasty outcome the outcome is improved if anatomic tuberosity reduction and healing is achieved restoration of humeral height and virgin is achieved Humeral height is best judged from the superior border of the pec major insertion. The prognosis is poor with arthroplasty if the tuberosity non-humeral or malunion is there or the version of humeral component is more than 40 degree retroverted. Now let's discuss the individual fracture one by one. Surgical neck fracture as I have already discussed is the most common fracture pattern. The deforming force influencing the fracture displacement is pec major muscle which pulls the shaft anterior and medial. However, head and attached tuberosity stay neutral. The treatment options include non-operative if minimally displaced. And if displacement is more, then either technique, close reduction, percutin is pinning, plate fixation or IM nail can be done. Now let's discuss the greater tuberosity fracture. As you know, the greater tuberosity gives the insertion of three important rotator cuff muscles, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and anterior minor. So these muscles pull the fragment upward and laterally. The displacement should be less than 5 mm if conservative treatment is considered. If the displacement is more than 5 mm, then fixation with either screw if the bone stock is good can be achieved. However, in case of osteoporotic patient, non absorbable suture technique can be used. And the technique of tension band wiring can be used in the treatment of displaced greater tuberosity fracture. The lesser tuberosity fracture assumes. Posterior dislocation until proven otherwise because this fracture is often associated with the posterior dislocation of the shoulder. And if the displacement is minimal, it can be treated conservatively in sling. And if the displacement is more, open reduction internal fixation can be used with the screw. The next fracture is anatomic neck fracture. Again, if it is minimally displaced, it can be treated in sling. If there is marked displacement, open reduction internal fixation in young adults can be done. Open reduction internal fixation or hemi arthroplasty or reverse total shoulder arthroplasty is done in case of elderly. The next fracture is surgical net and greater tuberosity fracture. And the forces influencing the displacement of uh, this type of fracture includes rotator cuff musculature, which leads articular surface to point anteriorly, often associated with the longitudinal rotator cuff tear. And nowadays, the trend towards non operative management is given because of the high complication rate with open induction internal fixation. In case of a young patient, percutaneous spinning or IM fixation or locking plates can be done. 
in elderly patient hemiarthroplasty with tuberosity repair or reverse total shoulder arthroplasty can be done four part valgus impacted fracture this is a special type of four type of four part fracture there is a valgus impaction of the shaft of humerus into the head why this fracture is important because there are low rates of avascularness necrosis of the head of humerus and it results uh, because of the axial trauma to the abducted upper limb and direct impaction between the humeral head and the glenoid cavity and there is posterior medial displacement because of its physiological anatomical confrontation in retroversion Radiographically, you will see the alignment between the medial shaft and the head segment. There are low rate of avascular necrosis if posterior medial component intact, thus preserving the intraosseous blood supply. And the treatment is open reduction in tunnel fixation, in which the articular surface is raised and the defect is filled with the artificial bone graft, and the tuberous teeth are repaired. Now we will discuss four part head splitting fracture. This fracture is very important because of its association with the high risk of avascular necrosis. And the demand, deforming forces acting on this type of fracture is that shaft is pulled medially by pec major. Open induction and internal fixation or hemiarthroplasty is advised in young patient. If the head is reconstructable, go for open induction and internal fixation. And if the head is non-reconstructable, then have hemiarthroplasty is advised. In elderly patient, this type of fracture is usually treated with hemiarthroplasty or reverse total shoulder arthroplasty. Now we will discuss the complications of proximal humerus fracture. The most common complication is screw cutout and the incidence is up to 14%. Here is a study showing the display of screw cutout after open induction and internal fixation. In this study, the complication including screw cutout with intraarticular displacement was in 23%, varus displacement in 13%, and osteonecrosis in 2% of the patients. The other complication that may occur in proximal humerus fracture is avascular necrosis. However, the avascular necrosis is better tolerated in upper limb as compared to upper lower limb. And AVAS, incidence of avascular necrosis is more, is more common in elderly with four part head splitting fracture. The other complication that may be encountered in proximal humerus fracture is the nerve injury and axillary nerve is the most common injured nerve in proximal humerus fracture because axillary nerve is found 5 to 7 cm distal to the tip of the acromion and it can be injured iatrogenically while doing the close reduction and percutaneous spinning. The other nerve may be injured are suprascapular nerve and musculocutaneous nerve. And musculocutaneous nerve is most commonly injured iatrogenically with the placement of anterior pins in close reduction and percutaneous spinning. The other complication that may be encountered is malunion. Usually, various apex anterior or malunion of the greater tuberosity is there. Results in fear if converting from various malunited fracture to total shoulder orthoplasty. So, better to use reverse shoulder orthoplasty instead. The non-union may be encountered most common after two-part surgical neck fracture. The treatment of chronic non-union or malunion in elderly should include orthoplasty. Lesser tuberosity non-union leads to weakness with the lift of testing. Greater tuberosity non-union after orthoplasty leads to lack of active shoulder elevation. 
and the risk factor for non-union is age and smoking. The other complication that may be present in proximal ring rust fracture are rotator cuff injuries and dysfunction, the tendon injury of long head of bicep, missed posterior dislocation, adhesive capsulitis and scar formation, post-traumatic arthritis, and infection. With this, we come to an end of our presentation. I hope you like this. Next time, we will see the surgical exposure of proximal humerus. What are the possible options?